Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar. We certainly appreciate your time and promise to make today's presentation exciting. Over the next hour, Amir Reza Mehran, Fitex torque sensor expert, and myself will be discussing the ins and outs of rotary torque sensors. This is a topic that dates back to the 1950s with LeBeau. Uh, actually, Fitex has uh, some, some connections to the founders, but we won't get too deep into this. Um, uh, we'll give you guys a brief overview on the mechanics behind these products and break into application section, which uh, I think you guys will enjoy very thoroughly. Um, and then we'll conclude today's sessions with our Q&A. So make sure you stay with us and post your questions on the platform. We'll definitely make sure we take those towards the end. And we also have some goodies and downloads for you guys to download. Um, throughout the webinar, some additional documents that are available. We can reference them a little bit later on. Before we kick things off, I'm going to cover a quick background on FUTEC and our expertise in the test and measurement field. Um, and then from there, I'll pass the mic over to Amir Raza to, to really dive deeper into the rotary torque sensors. So I want to start today's webinar discussing some general details about our company. FUTEC was founded in 1988, and uh, we are headquartered in beautiful Orange County, California where we design and manufacture our torque sensors and load cells. Uh, for those that are thrilled with accreditations, you'll be pleased to know that we are ISO 9001-2008 certified and have an ISO 1725-A2LA accredited laboratory. Besides our expertise in test and measurement products, the company offers electronic instruments, and we'll touch on those very quickly uh, towards the tail end of this presentation. Uh, I do want to make one uh, comment here as uh, one of the distinguishing character that it's very evident here at Futech, and that is that we love to tackle demanding test and measurement applications. We have had our products used in space. We actually have a sensor right now that it is on its way to Mars on a NASA rover. We've seen our sensors used in uh, deep water applications, uh, cryogenic chemicals. So briefly put, this company loves challenges. And while, while we offer a lot of sensors that are used in ambient conditions, we like to consider ourselves uh, our, the thrill seekers of test and measurement. Now I know today's audience includes engineers that may have had some experience working with sensors, uh, but for those of you who are in, new to this field, I'm going to quickly cover our key component, which is the string gauge. And then from there, Amir Rosa is going to explain how the strain gauge works on a rotary torque sensor, the differences between rotary reaction type, and, and he'll, I'll let him dive a little bit deeper into that topic. So let's move forward and get started. Now, the main technology and component that we utilize in our torque sensors is a bonded foil strain gauge. Um, you see that on the screen um, shown in the top left. Uh, there's other technologies such as piezo or semiconductor, but Futex torque sensors predominantly use bonded foil strain gauge. In this slide, you can see a sample of what a strain gauge looks like. The strain gauge design is very typical, but the shape, functionality, and size can vary depending on the sensor requirements. Uh, speaking of size, the average size of our strain gauges is roughly 8 millimeters. Um, if we were going to throw an actual picture on the screen, you guys would definitely miss it. So I'm just kind of blew it up for you to, to see the, the, some of the finer details in there. The strain gauge shown is sensitive in one direction, and it's made of special alloy foils, which include constantin and karma material. The basic insulated backing is a polyamide or cast epoxy. Uh, there's other technologies out there or other types um, of insulators, but these are the two most common. The string gauge also offers a great advantage, mostly in how robust it is. It's easy to use, and more importantly, you can utilize it on different forms and surfaces, and that's really key, especially when we're dealing with uh, rotary type sensors. That's basically all you guys really need to know as far as string gauges go. Uh, there's a lot more information that we can touch on, and for anyone that's you know has questions about string gauges, uh, please go ahead and email us or post it on on the platform and we will do our best to answer you. Uh, the, the last note I wanted to make is that we do think, you know, uh, all the components we're just about to break into, the reason we want to explain all of these to you guys is that it, it really gives you a fundamental idea of how these components need to come together to build that perfect system. So without further ado, uh, let me turn the mic over to Amir Raza, and Amir Raza is going to uh, take over from here. Thank you, Navid. Good day. This is Amir Reza, and I'm going to take you guys through the rest of the webinar. 
FewTech focus in rotary torque sensor is application driven. As a result, FewTech offers compact size rotary torque sensors in both slip ring and non-contact version with optional encoder. This line of product is available with millivolt per volt output, amplified or optional USB digital output. Very quick in the following slides, I will explain how torque is measured in a rotary shaft. This slide demonstrates a shaft under torsional deformation. Here we show a bonded strain gauge on a shaft for torque measurement. The change of the strain gauge resistance is proportional to the strain induced by torsional stress. In the rest of the webinar, I will explain the differences between rotary versus reaction sensors, the importance of alignment and couplings, and brief information about bearings, slip rings, and encoders. Most of people confuse rotary torque with reaction torque sensors. So here we are showing you guys a reaction torque sensor on the right hand side and a rotary sensor on the left. But really what is the difference? Reaction sensors are not in line with rotating parts. There is no bearings, slip rings, or wearing part. Also, they are not recommended for control situation as they have delay for catching up with rapid changes in the system. On the other hand, rotary sensors mount in line with rotating parts and measure exact torque in different RPM rates, from 3000 RPM to 50K RPM. In general, because of moving parts like bearings, slip rings, and wear and tear, they are high maintenance. Also, they need to be aligned with rotating part for achieving best results. Typically, you guys cannot see inside a rotary torque sensor. Here we are showing you guys inside of a slip ring type rotary torque sensor. And we are breaking down the components. As you can see, we have bearings on both ends and shaft is sticking out of the housing. Also, you can see the slip ring in the middle of the housing. And I'm going to go through each element over the next few slides. Bearings are one of the most critical parts of most rotary sensors. We utilize small cross-section bearings for our product, so it makes them as compact as possible for a certain capacity. If you use low quality bearings, the shaft heats up and miss your measurement and lifespan of the sensor. A tip for you guys, figure out where the bearing come from. Are they quality bearings? And I, I mean, it's a good question to ask from your supplier. Here we are showing you the slip ring assembly. On the left side, you can see the slip ring which sits on the shaft and the, on the right side you can see the slip ring and a brush block. The brush block sits on the housing. When the shaft rotates the slip ring assembly transmits this electric signal and the supply voltage from housing to the rotating shaft. On the right hand side as you can see there is a contact between brush block and the slip ring. Because of these contacts, the RPM rate directly affects the lifespan of slip ring assembly. The higher RPM you go, you need to replace the slip ring assembly earlier because of wear and tear of the unit. So, so far I've covered the bearings and the slip ring assembly and I'm going to go through encoders and the importance of couplings in rotary torque sensors in next slides. Here is another optional component that come with some rotary sensors. Some people need it and some doesn't. It has two parts, a disc which sits on the shaft and the pickup which sits on the stationary housing. Pickup communicates with the disc and measure the angle and angular velocity of the shaft. In this slide, I'm showing you guys two examples of couplings, flexible and stiff. Depending on the speed and torque range, either of them can be used. In general, couplings compensate the misalignment between torque sensor and inline shaft. Misalignments increase extraneous loads and moments, which directly affect measurement, 
as well as lifespan of the bearings, sleep rings, and the whole unit. In my next slide, I'm going to show you guys what is the general configuration of a torque sensor in a system. Here's an illustration that we are showing how a torque sensor should be aligned in the system. As I said before, the torque sensor have to be protected against bending moments and forces and the right choice of couplings is very critical for correct measurement. So as you, as you can see in this slide, a torque sensor is in line with a motor and a brake and flexible couplings are used to make sure that there is no misalignments and the system is perfectly in line. So far we covered the different components inside the rotary torque sensor. So now how can you choose the right rotary torque sensor for your application? First thing to figure out is how you want to put it in your system. As you can see in this slide, we offer square drive on the right side, hex drive in the middle, and the shaft to shaft on the left side. And really the drive types depends on the application. And you are the one who decides on the hex drive, square drive, or shaft to shaft. So if you have question, you can always contact our application engineer and we can help you with your selection. Now what else do you need to take into account when you're choosing a right torque sensor? You have to consider response time, cycle usage, torque range, RPM requirements, and output selection such as midi board per volt range, VDC, or USB output. Based on required resolution and operation torque, you can select your capacity. As I said before, you can always contact our application engineer for more support. Now we get to the fun part, which is application. First application that I will cover in this webinar is power tool verification, which can be used in handheld screwdrivers, verification of torque wrenches, and verification of nut runners. In this illustration, we are showing how torque can be monitored in line with the power tool. As you can see, the torque sensor is in line with the power tool and with a digital display or USB module connected to computer or PLC. Now we are showing you guys a video about the illustrated application and uh, you can see how the torque can be monitored in line with the power tool. So here is the rotary torque sensor and here is the USB module and of course connector cable. Now the torque sensor is in line with the power tool and the operator is screwing, is tightening the screws. The data of this test was collected through Sensit software, which is a test and measurement software that it catches the data during the test. Torque monitoring and control during production assembly is required to ensure proper holding power and, and avoiding stripping the thread. Also in automotive and aerospace industries due to government regulations, Torque measurements have to be verified and recorded. The next application that I'm covering today is motors, which can be used in test benches and stands, engine testing, and endurance testing. As shown in illustration, motor test stand consists of a motor, inline torque sensor with interfacing instrumentation, and the test object. This setup is used for verification, validation, qualification, endurance testing, and MTBF reliability prediction of any rotating parts. It is also used for life expectancy of slip ring and bearing as well as friction verification. As shown in the illustration, the inline tor torque sensor with encoder measures starting, running, and braking torque as well as RPM and angle. The test data are collected for signature purposes and further analysis. 
We offer turnkey system of the torque sensor related instrumentation and software in support of test stand application. The motor test stand is very typical and over the few next slides I'm going to go through two more application of motor test stand in different industries. Here is another application for cycle pan feeding in agriculture. We are using a torque sensor with encoder for optimization of motor pump performance to prevent any interruption during feeding. In case that torque sensor with encoder is not used in line within the system, periodic test of motor pump in test stand is recommended for efficiency performance and preventive maintenance. This is our last example for motor test stand. As you can see, a torque sensor in line with a motor controls the ventilation in a power plant. As you have seen so far, the application of motor torque stand is diverse and wherever you have a motor, you can use an inline torque sensor for feedback control. The last application that I'm going through today is robotics. Torque sensors are used in many robotics and automated testing equipment to verify and improve design and material based on high cycle fatigue testing. Here is a fun example of robotic arm which rotates a hockey stick. The arm keeps hitting the hockey puck continuously and torque sensors highlighted at the pivot joints catch the applied torque. Engineers can further analyze the forces applied at the tip of the hockey stick over high cycles. I want to just jump in here real quick. We actually have prepared um, a video for you guys showing you this application and I think it would help uh, I know the illustrations do quite a bit, but this video uh, takes it one step further and kind of demonstrates that concept. So if we can just queue up the video and play it. As Amir has explained, um, and as the video demonstrates, the, you, you have this robotic arm here, and what they're doing is the it's emulating a hockey slap shot um, being taken. And so here they're just checking uh, to see what the endurance is on that particular stick, and this is this this device is there's you know it's obviously very creative in how they've put it together, um, but this is just one example of how a rotary torque sensor can be used, and it really goes to show the the broad depth of these products. Now this robotic arm can really work in any type of propeller or turbine that. You know, it's uh, rotating between 180 to 360 degrees. And you can measure that rotation or whether it's for endurance you're after, whatever you're particularly trying to, to capture. I think this, this was one of the most creative ones. I also wanted to note that the pivot arm that rotates um, as we have it illustrated, uh, you have to watch out because you can't put the entire weight of the arm onto the rotary torque sensor. You have to make sure that the shaft is supported and then the weight is not just coming down onto this uh, torque sensor. Uh, I know sometimes uh, some of our engineers out there use these application illustrations as input for how to set up their tests, but you should definitely check in with us for any one of these applications if you have any questions about the setup or installation. So that's it. I just wanted to show you guys this video and I'll hand it back to you, Amirza. This is an example of robotic arm used in medical precision cutting for fast response and repeatable performance. As shown here, the torque sensors are used at joints for precise movements. Futex specializing in sensor miniaturization has developed a rotary torque sensor as small as 18 mm in diameter and 31 mm long for robotic surgery. So far we showed you guys general applications of rotary torque sensor to get the concept and you guys can always contact our application engineer for specific support. In addition to our extensive line of torque sensor, we also manufacture a wide line of instrumentation in support of different applications. We, have, we offer handhelds, panel mounts, inline amplifiers and USB module to pair up with our rotary torque sensor to get different outputs for different applications. 
That was a lot of information, and I want to go ahead and thank our speaker today, Amir Azamehron, again, taking us through the critical requirements for the rotary torque sensors. Um, we went through quite a bit there from the breakdown of components to the specifications to what it takes to different applications. Um, really, we have a lot of questions posted on the board, so we're going to try to do our best to answer as many of these. Please do remember, if we can't answer your question, we're going to get to it at the end of the session. We're going to email you guys. We'll have a follow-up email come out from Global Spec as well that will address these. Um, so let me go ahead and read off our first question, and then we'll go from there. Okay, we have our first question. This is actually coming out of California, where we are based out of. So um, this question reads, what are the available outputs with the rotary line? Great question. Our torque sensors are available with millivolt per volt and 5 VDC outputs. Also, we offer optional 4 to 20 milliamp and USB digital output as well. Perfect. Thank you so much, Amir, for, for answering that question. Uh, we'll move on quickly here to the second question. Um, here we have a user who's asking us, what is the maximum RPM for each sensor? And uh, I'm wondering if that might be a little bit too tedious to cover for each sensor, so maybe we can tackle it from a broader range. What's the maximum RPM that we offer, Amirza? Uh It varies with product line. I mean, the best bet is to check the specification sheet of each product in our website. But on top of my head, the, the maximum RPM that we support is 50,000 RPM. So 50,000 RPMs is the max, and I would also recommend, like Aaron, as I mentioned, use the website as a reference tool because we're constantly updating the specifications, and it might just come out that in about a month or two months, we offer you know, a higher RPM. Um, so always the website has the latest information, so do use that to your advantage. Um, moving forward to the next question. I mean, can you offer some guidelines on brush and brushless rotary torque sensors? I think um, this user is also touching on contact versus non-contact, but if you can give us some guidelines on this, I'm sure the audience would appreciate that. Interesting question. In brush or slip ring type, the housing and rotating shaft have direct physical contact through brushes, which are mounted to the housing and the slip ring, which is mounted to the rotating shaft. In the brushless or non-contact type, the power supply and signal are transmitted through transformers. And practically, non-contact rotary torque sensors support higher speed and they require less maintenance. Oh, I see. So what you're saying is that the non-contact type, is that the same as brushless? Yes, that is correct. The, the brushless type, the maintenance on that is less. Yes. So I would say better life expectancy, but then again, it depends how you, how often you're using it. That is correct. Okay, excellent, excellent. I think that was a great question. Again, thanking our audience for posting these out there. We're trying to get through them as fast as we can for each of you. Um, let me remind you, if I can't or if Amirza cannot answer a question, we will email you and follow up with you personally. Um, our next question does the use of strain gauges offer any advantages? Um, I think that uh, they're going to expand on here, and they're asking uh, versus magnetic or capacitive types. So let me read that one more time. Does the use of strain gauges offer any advantages over elements such as magnetic or capacitive? That is a tough one. The strain gauge types provide long-term stability, wider temperature range operation, and they are more immune to vibrations when compared to other technologies. Okay. Our next question is from a user, actually an international one, and they're asking us, how do you mount a rotary torque sensor? And I know that might be a little bit difficult to put into words, but try your best if you can explain to us, how do you mount it? As I, as I said during the webinar, I mean, it really depends on your application. But we offer square drive, hex drive, and shaft to shaft for different applications. But keep in mind that for shaft to shaft, the use of coupling is mandatory. Okay, okay, excellent. Our next question uh, looks like it's a little bit geared towards the instruments and electronics. 
This user is asking, how can I convert the millivolt per volt output to a current 420 milliamp output? Very nice question. You can use FewTech CSG110, IPM650, or IHH500. Also, you can download the rotary torque line, uh, which we presented in this webinar. Um, I also want to clarify on that. I, I, I mean, as I mentioned, the CSG110, for those of you that are not familiar, uh, that is our amplifier. The I, IPM650 is a panel mount type display, and the IHH500, those are a handheld display. Now, one note is that our website does offer you full configuration uh, options, so if you do select the auto retorque sensor. It will show you which instruments and accessories go on there, but uh, that's just a side note for anyone who's interested in, in configuring it. Of course, application engineers can always assist you with any type of uh, electrical configuration. Um, but uh, another question that's come up over here uh, on the electronics, does FUTEC design its own electronics? All our uh, electronic instrumentations are designed and, man and manufactured in-house. Okay. Excellent. Um, let's see. I mean, so we have a question here, very basic going back. How does the shaft measure torque? <laughs> I guess I uh, covered it in the beginning of the webinar. So I, I think, I, I mean, the best bet is to refer to the beginning of the webinar. And, and for this user, I'm guessing that they probably joined us late. So for, for those of you that joined this webinar late in the game, this webinar is going to be available for on-demand um, instant access. So you can uh, pause it, watch it at your leisure, whichever time zone you're in. Um, so for that particular user, it, it would just take a, too much to, to answer this right now. So I would recommend going back to the start of this webinar to answer your particular question. Can uh, the rotary torque sensor measure static torque or does it require rotation? It can measure static and reaction torque. Okay. And another follow-up, can it work in counterclockwise too? What does counterclockwise refer to? It's the direction of the torque. All FUTEC rotary line is designed to work in both clockwise and counterclockwise. I see. Okay, so it doesn't matter which direction you go, these, these sensors at least are designed to do both. That is correct. Okay. What FUTEC instruments can read its amplified torque output? Again, as I said, I highly recommend to download the rotary torque guide, which was presented in this webinar. But to answer this question, you can use IHH 500, IPM 650, and selected USB modules. Okay. Um, now we have a little bit more of a technical question coming from our gurus out there. How many pulses do I get per revolution? I guess this question should be how many pulses do I get per revolution through encoders? Okay. And the answer is 360 degrees. Uh, the answer is 360 degree pulses. Okay. But as I said during the webinar, the encoder is an optional feature for rotary torque sensors, and it depends on application that you are working on. Okay, so that's not something that uh, everyone needs to particularly concern themselves with. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, we have here somebody who wants to know, is the shaft one piece or multiple pieces uh, that's actually measuring torque? It is manufactured in one piece. In one piece, okay. Um, here we have a great, actually, um, application question, now, a little bit broader, but somebody wants to know, is there any environments that this sensor is not suited for? Well, that is a good question. I mean, our line are not suited for submersible or contaminated environments. Also, we don't recommend uh, environments with high amounts of vibrations or noise pollutions. Okay. Now, for anyone who is actually attempting to use these rotary torque sensors for submersible, I'm here as I just pointed it out. Um, what I would recommend if you do have an application that is a little bit more demanding, definitely get in touch with application engineers. Um, that's what they're there for. Uh, of course, we offer a lot of standard products that uh, would meet this requirement. But again, for this particular, if, if you're thinking about taking your 
uh, rotary torque sensor into high temperature, um, air pollution, noise pollution, whatever it is that you're concerned about, it, it's always a smart idea to double check with one of the application engineers. Uh, moving forward to the next question, uh, what is the usage of the encoder and what is the output type? Encoders can be used to measure angle and speed and the output is a TTL type signal looking like a square wave. There are two outputs available from our encoders, one wave form leading the other, which can be used to tell which direction the sensor is rotating. Now I have a, a follow up to that. So we talked about encoders that may be optional, but if I wanted a, an instrument that works with the encoder, um, do we have any solutions for that? Yes. Uh, you can use IHH 500 Elite. Okay, so it's there's there's one instrument and it's called the IHH 500 Elite. It's a handheld. It's a handheld type. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, next question, and let's see this one: Which instrument supports both millivolt per volt and VDC output? Again, another instrument related question. As I said before, I highly recommend to download Rotary Torque Guide, but the answer is IHH 500 and IPM 650. Excellent. Now, somebody is a little bit curious about our micro torque sensor. Um, apparently, this okay. This person has already looked for it on our website, but has not been able to find it. Can you offer them any other insight on this particular product? Nice catch. I mean, because standard version of this product, which is from our TRS three hundred series, is under final evaluation and is expected to be released by the last quarter of two thousand twelve. So. I recommend him to check our website by the end of 2012. Okay, okay, so for that particular user who is interested in micro, go and check out the FreeTech website. Uh, hopefully towards the end of the year we'll have that. Um, I mean, we see this question come up often, again, not just for torque sensors in load cells, pressure sensors, and it has to do with just the calibration. It's one of the most common questions, how often do, do they need to recalibrate their torque sensor? It all depends on usage, environment, and operating torque range. With the normal usage, annual calibration with manufacturer is highly recommended. Here at Futec, we offer NIST traceable calibration with ISO 17025 with A2LA accreditation. We also offer Z540 and other standards. Okay, so just in summary, to put it in perspective for anyone looking for accreditations or that type of standards, FUTIC does offer that. Um, but going back, depending on how you use your product, that's when that's one of the key factors in determining how often you need to recalibrate it, as Amirza just eloquently put for us. Um, we're getting down to the wire here. We're going to take our last two questions. And again, if I, my apologies if we didn't get to you. We will post these questions on our website and email them to you as a follow-up. Um, when designing a system with a stepper or servo motor, what type of sensor do you recommend? That is a tough question. For stepper motor, we recommend reaction torque sensor which can be mounted on one end of the torque sensor. For servo motor, either reaction or rotary torque sensor can be used. Either one can be used based on the size of the motor. And you can refer to the very beginning of the webinar for the differences between rotary versus reaction torque sensor. Okay, excellent. Thank you for the participant for asking us that. Um, this is going to be the last question of today. And let's see here. It says, what are the effects of misalignment during installation? A very key question. As I covered during the webinar, misalignments creates extraneous load and moments which directly affect the precision of the measurement. Also, misalignment affect the life expectancy of components such as bearings, encoder, and slip rings. Unfortunately, that was the last question we have time for. And I just want to take a moment and thank all of you for joining us today. And as a sign of our appreciation, one lucky attendee will receive an iPad for joining us. Um, also, to find more information regarding our rotary torque sensors, please uh, visit our website at futech.com. Uh, you will find a, an entire section under our solutions tab dedicated toward this presentation and a lot more information that right there. Uh, of course, if you have any 
questions specifically that we haven't answered that you want to just more breakdown of, email us at futech at futech.com and uh, we'll get back to you. You will be receiving an email from Global Spec with a link to the on-demand version of this presentation, a PDF of this PowerPoint, and an FAQ document and a Q&A transcript. Again, thank you for taking the time to sit down with us uh, this afternoon. Take care and we'll talk to you soon.